Hello everybody and welcome to Season 2 of RP1 with RSS Reborn. Over this past month there were a couple updates to some of the mods we used for this and I found myself in danger of ruining my save file once again so I decided to do a fresh install this time using the brand new uh, RSS Reborn installer program which made things ludicrously easy. I just, I had such a great time. RSS Reborn was always kind of tricky to get installed, so being able to simply click on a few drop downs uh, made things a lot easier. So let's go ahead and start a new game. Uh, one of the other reasons why I wanted to start a new game is because if you were familiar with the last episode, of RSS Reborn. We are in the mid to late 60s right now and we have only just recently gotten into orbit. We haven't gotten any Kerbals in space or anything so let's try to do this a little more efficiently a little faster. Uh, I noticed I'm not sure if this is new or maybe I just didn't notice it before but they now have um, scenarios to select. You can just start off right at the light satellites program or the heavy satellites program uh, and kind of skip the early sounding rocket stuff but we're not going to do that. We're going to start uh, as usual and try to just kind of go through everything pretty quickly. We're gonna go ahead and pick up early rocket development at a breakneck speed. I feel like we've gotten pretty good at being able to get these done on time within the five years, so we're gonna go ahead and take that. But because we use that reputation and take it at breaks, breakneck speed, we can only do fast on suborbital research, but that's not a problem because we need to unlock a science experiment in order to do those things anyway, so it'll take us a second. We're not going to be doing planes just yet. We may do it a little bit later when we're a little closer to human flight uh, or if we have a need to pick up some extra science. So let's go ahead and grab the first two contracts. These ones are always available and uh, can always be handled. Well, not always be handled, but usually be handled on the first launch. Both of those can go together. So I'm going to skip the build process. This is typically just a very standard Aero B rocket with a Tiny Tim booster. Um, it's slightly overburned. I think it's like six seconds overburned, but nothing, uh, nothing fancy, nothing too difficult. We're going to spend our free 20 uh, uh, researchers into research, or 20 free workers into research, and then we're going to hire 10 new workers to work on the first launch pad. We start off with two points of science, so we're going to go ahead and put these both into the SRBs and the liquid fuel engines. We are going to be using SRBs in this playthrough. I found them super helpful uh, in the past, so we're going to just kind of keep on with that. So now that we've got our intro started, we've got everything set up, we're going to go ahead and skip forward to the launch. There's not really much to be had with just time warping. Um, in this first few episodes, uh, I may not do too much building because this is very much the standard rocket. If you go through the Wikipedia, it will build practically this entire thing, this exact thing. So uh, we'll, we'll focus on doing more builds in the coming episodes. I really do want to kind of pick back up and get back to uh, a satellite program, an orbital program, and start working on that and making some progress with that. I've been practicing in my free time trying to use MechJab uh, to the best of my ability. I've always flown by hand in RSS and so it's it's a little bit challenging to go from uh, that you know being able to launch every launch successfully manually to then having to upgrade to a more uh, advanced technology like like MechJab. But when I was attempting to uh, intercept the moon or at least just try to get in the plane of the moon, uh, I found it a little difficult and I feel like if I can really nail down and understand MechJeb 2, uh, I think it'll be a little bit easier for me. There are a few uh, tutorials on YouTube about MechJeb, uh, but not too many dealing with uh, RP1 and some of the ones that are dealing with RP1 are very specifically uh, tailored to the craft that they're launching. So. If any of you have any tips with MechJeb, I would love to hear it. I want to learn everything I can. And if you know of a good video, a good tutorial, please let me know that as well. Um, so this rocket only made it to 101 uh, kilometers above the surface, but that will be uh, sufficient to settle both of our contracts because we only needed to make it to 100 kilometers, not uh, 140, which is the, the line of space in RSS. So yeah, uh, very simple Aero B engine. As long as you don't have any ullage problems, as long as you don't have any um, 
failure to ignite, as long as you don't uh, underburn it or anything, uh, it should be enough to finish these first two contracts uh, fairly easily. We did put another one of these rockets into the build queue. I like to, especially early on, I like to build two rockets at the same time, just in case something happens. Uh, these early engines have a tendency of failing. And so if, if for some reason, if we just can't launch the rocket, I'd like to only have a, you know, a week's time until the next one is ready. Uh, and that will help us. That's kind of the reason why we ended up wasting as much time as we did uh, in the previous series was because uh, we're just not uh, familiar with uh, the best time management skills. And sometimes we'd spend time uh, time warping forward to unlock a science technology or something when we should have been uh, utilizing every single day to the best of our advantage. Uh, I did put a parachute on here because I was hoping to recover the whole rocket, but due to the kind of ballistic trajectory that we have right here, it is not looking like the parachute will be able to open without ripping, so we are unfortunately going to range safety this. It's okay, I mean, that was probably going to be the goal for it anyways, if we didn't put a parachute on, we want to make sure that we don't bombard the humans, not the Kerbals, but the humans down, uh, down below. But, uh, yeah, it just, it, the parachute wasn't enough, and we're going to have to redesign that if we want to collect uh, our rocket again. So here we are with our first headline, Rocket Reaches Space. Uh, historically speaking, you know, the Aero B engine. This game, uh, if you're not familiar, uh, is best while followed, uh, following a historical path. I've never challenged myself to only use certain parts. Maybe, maybe once I become a little bit better and, and I can do things uh, a little more intentionally instead of just failing my way to the best, <laughs> then I'll start doing a challenge like that. Anyways, I unlocked new engine, so I went to upgrade my Aero B, but it turns out with the second version of the Aero B engine, it uses a different fuel type, so the launch pad that we had created is not capable. So I canceled those, en uh, those edits, brought the SR0 back in, that stands for sounding rocket, uh, brought that back in, and the change I am going to make is I'm going to put a decoupler between the top and the body of the rocket, and that will allow us to recover part of uh, the craft. And I'm also going to take some time, even though I don't have a launch pad for it, I'm going to build the SR-1 with uh, the better Aero-B engine and the better uh, SRB to, uh, to fit, and that will be building while we're working on this next mission. I spent some points into material science, so I can hopefully unlock lighter materials, and now the uh, job that I'm taking is reaching a suborbital trajectory and return. So we do have to make sure that we can get some part of the rocket safely landed back on the ground. So because we didn't have the ability of editing this rocket to include the new technology, we just decided to let it go. This is the same rocket as before with the Tiny Tim booster and the uh, singular configuration Aero B. Uh, this will not reach the 140 kilometer mark that uh, is required for the mission, but it will be a good way of testing our parachute. And on top of that, we're also getting science data from this thermometer data, um, barometer data, just early science and everything. And every every little scrap of point is necessary. So. Even though this launch, I, I kind of fully knew that it wasn't going to satisfy the mission. Uh, the, just the engine is just not powerful enough. It's not going to reach the height it needs. Uh, I, I felt okay sending it anyways because uh, any science is good science. But as you see here, we're, uh, our apparatus is only 97 kilometers and falling. So yeah, this one is, uh, is a dud, but that's okay. We're still early on in our program, and these rockets don't cost too much and don't take too much time to roll out. And like I mentioned before, this rocket was already in production at the time, so it would have only been uh, inefficient to scrap it and uh, try to push out a new launch pad and a new rocket in the same amount of time. So we're going to be doubling up our launch pads a little bit in this early stage. We might have more launch pads that we need. We're probably going to end up in the negative a few times uh, fund-wise, uh, funds-wise, because uh, 
we're going to try to do some aggressive spending on our engineers, our launch pads, and, uh, and our technology. We're going to want to unlock our scientific research as quickly as possible. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm not going to say that I am going to, but I'm going to try to keep to uh, a very typical timeline to the actual uh, space race and the uh, space programs. I don't know how realistic I can get in building these rockets. I'm, I'm not as great as many other people who play RSS at building very historically accurate uh, pieces I kind of just do the best that I can with what I have, but uh, I'm learning I'm I'm trying and I think once we start getting to crude flights uh, You know crude orbits and uh, lunar impactors and things like that. It's going to be uh, a lot more necessary to follow working designs proven proven methods here we are. I have noticed a few more graphical itch, uh, glitches with the volumetric clouds in this version of the RSS Reborn. However, nothing really game-breaking and nothing too uh, uh, difficult to deal with, you know, like flashing lights or things like that. Just, just a, a few minor dark spots and everything. But anyways, we uh, retrieved that piece, so we got a little fun fact. We got our science. Six points to spend, so we're going to go ahead and jam them all into this early science node because we want to be able to unlock that uh, science experiment so we can complete the next mission in our suborbital research uh, program. We are going to go with Satish Dewan for his increase in science from transmission as well as uh, lower reputation loss. Uh, however, it does remove 8% of our funds from our program, so that is something we're going to have to deal with. As you can see here, we are in the negative, so I had to uh, let go some of our engineers uh, in order to get ourselves into a net positive, uh, at least per day, so we can kind of work our way out of this, because until we get ourselves uh, into the positive, we were not able to launch another rocket. So that did take us a little bit of time, but here we are with the SR-1 now has the Aerojet SRB, which burns for significantly longer than the Tiny Tim, um, and the second uh, configuration of the Aero B engine. However, this one failed to ignite. Um, nothing I could do could fix it. It wasn't anything other than, uh, it wasn't an ullage issue, it wasn't a timing issue. I didn't have, I did everything that I could to get this going right, but it was just, uh, it's just how the engine wanted to do. So, uh, instead of decoupling, uh, we're just going to deploy the parachutes on their own, and hopefully that will carry the whole rocket down. Uh, there's no point in losing the body uh, just due to an explosive force as it lands without a parachute, and considering that we didn't go nearly high enough to build at the speed that we had in the first launch, the problem that we had in the first launch. So, went ahead and recovered that fund. We had another one, another SR-1 backed up, ready to go. Uh, this one went ahead and lit without a hitch. There we are. It took a little bit of uh, fine-tuning to make sure that MechJeb handled that one right because the Aerojet... Uh, well, first off, the Aero B second configuration doesn't take nearly as long to, um, to, to initialize its burn. Uh, it spools up very quickly. Uh, I believe it's like 0.8 seconds of a spool up as opposed to the 2.5 or something, three second spool up. So it doesn't need as much time to pre-burn. And then secondly, the Aerojet uh, starts losing, it's a little bit different than the Titan Tim. It starts losing its uh, propulsion and starts creating more drag around the 0.3 second mark. Um, and so that's why I had the, the solids drop early, but only 0.3 seconds because any more than that and uh, the Aerojet would have rocketed back up and hit our uh, second stage and any longer than that and we would have lost uh, some of our forward momentum from it. So it took a lot of planning and uh, test flights to really nail down the perfect settings for this mech jet. But there we go, our apoapsis, we talk straight through the engine cutoff, but our apoapsis is 156 kilometers, meaning that we are very easily going to break the 140 kilometer uh, goal for this uh, mission. 
And then all that is left once we pass that is to uh, safely return it back home. And we know that if we separate the lower body, uh, the top nose cone will be able to safely make it back home uh, with the weight of just that single parachute. So I'm pretty excited. I think this is uh, it's all going to go well. Obviously, you can't count your chickens before they hatch, and so I want to make sure that we still keep an eye on everything. We don't uh, rest on our laurels. There we go. We are now on our way back down. As you see from our mission log, all we have to do is return safely, and that one will be done. Such a beautiful game. I did install a different um, night box, so there should be stars eventually. Maybe we just didn't reach a high enough altitude to see them, but uh, supposedly the Milky Way galaxy is going to be visible at some time. Also, just want to take a quick second and let you know that we are going to be doing a lot more Kerbal in this uh, next week. The next three episodes I have set up is going to be, well, not the next three, the next two. These three episodes, we're going to be doing some RSS Reborn and then follow it up with a little bit of KXP. We've got some more to do, especially after that <laughs> Around the World Challenge. Definitely got to keep exploring. And then we're going to finish up with some KSP POV after that. Really get back into the swing of Kerbal Space Program. It was nice taking the break uh, for October, just kind of recenter myself after that huge project. I needed a little break from these guys, but uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to get back into it. I have a lot of plans, a lot of goals, and I uh, hope you're excited as well. There we go. We successfully completed the mission and uh, recovered our pieces, and that is going to be the last launch for today, but we're going to go ahead and spend this science real fast. We've got 11.3 and uh, it's going to be a lot of points. It's, it's worth eight uh, in total, but this early material science uh, unlock will be good for us. Later, uh, later weight materials is always a good thing in here, but it's also going to uh, let us uh, upgrade our rocketry engines and stuff because you need to have certain things unlocked before you can research. And that early material science node is uh, dependent, or, or is a dependent for a few of those nodes. But yeah, so we are, uh, we have a net positive of our money, we're making stuff. We don't have any rockets planned currently, but we have a lot of science in the works. And in the next episode, we're going to be working on uh, both the downrange contracts and maybe one of the science ones. I'm excited, and I hope you are as well. As we take a quick peek at the date, we see that we had uh, spent less than a year working on this first part of the program. So I'm excited to see our speed and efficiency going forward. But anyways, that's where I'm going to leave today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward for more RP1. If you did, please consider subscribing. Drop me a like. Let me know your thoughts, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.